Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Glide's newest feature, the calendar component in Glide Pages. And we're talking about Glide Pages, not Glide Apps. Hopefully something like this will come to Glide Apps at some point, but until then we can play around with this really neat new feature, Calendar. So I'm going to come over here to my Glide page and we see that I have an event list here, which is basically a log of devices that have been checked in and checked out. But I can now uh, instead of viewing this like a list, I can actually view this as a calendar. So I can come over here to uh, my components, add a new component, and we see we have a brand new one called calendar under the collections section here. So if I select calendar and bring it up to the top, we now see we have a full width monthly view of calendar. We don't have to create this anymore. Uh, there's plenty of hacks we have seen on the Glide form about creating a calendar like experience using inline lists or using HTML, but now we have a native calendar component. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. First thing you might notice is that you can navigate between months, right? Uh, you can choose between month, week, or day view. So month, week, or day, which is awesome. Let's go back to month, and you can quickly navigate back to today if you're scrolling around. And on the right hand side, where we configure this is we can give it a title, like log, and then we can specify the title of the event, the description of the event, and the start time and end time. If there's no times, it's, it's only a date, let's say, then it'll consider it to be like an all day event. Whereas if it has a time as part of that date time, uh, value, then it'll actually know uh, how to span that event. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, so um, now if you, I'm going to scroll back a couple of months and we'll see, look at this. This is what it would look like if you have data here in your so this is what it would look like if you have data that you're displaying as a calendar. A couple of things you might notice, we have like single day events like this one over here. We also have events that span multiple days because we're specifying the start time and end time. And you see that it actually spans days, which is awesome. And uh, I guess you can see up to two events per day and the rest of that, you see that there's X amount more, I guess maybe three per day. Yeah. And there's X amount more per day. And if I tap on uh, where it says blank more, then it basically just converts it back to the day view. And now I can scroll through and see all of the events for that day. All right, let's go back to month view and scroll back. Um, if you hover over any events, you'll see a tool tip for that event, which is nice. Okay, and some other things we can do with this. If you go over here to options, we can filter the data just like any other collection. We can show the search bar so we can search for different events. Right, and it'll filter it. And we can also um, allow our users to filter. So maybe they want to filter by type. So maybe by the item. So I can see, let's take a look at just uh, iPad one, let's say, and I can scroll through and this is, these are only events that pertain to that particular filter. All right, one of the neatest features is you can also do a group by, right? In any other list, when you do a group by, it's going to group by, um, it's gonna be basically gonna create a new sub list, right? So in this collection, if I group by the status here, we see that we have checked in and checked out. It creates like a sub menu or a sub list, right? In calendars, what it does is it creates a same, it creates a grouping, but it doesn't do any like sub lists. It actually uh, determines the color of the event. So look at that. So pink here in this case would be ones that have been checked back in and blue in this case would be ones that have been checked out. Now, the one thing that I would like to see at some point is for us to be able to determine the coloring of our events because maybe blue, uh, pink and this blue don't match my color scheme or my branding at some point. So hopefully we can figure this out. Or hopefully Glad allows us to configure that at some point. If you know what you're doing, um, you can actually configure some CSS classes here. So for example, if I were to come over here to appearance and then configure that custom CSS, uh, you see I can actually tap into the color of the event so I can do like blue and red and have it more on brand. Um, but this is more of an advanced feature. We're not going to get into that at this point in our series today. So um, I'm just going to delete that. All right, some other things you can do with the calendar view is uh, under actions, um, we see here that uh, as part of this release with the calendar, um, Glide also cleaned up the user interface a little bit when we're going to configure components. So actions used to be down 
below here under the general tab but now it has its own dedicated tab called actions and it also has like the simple version or advanced version of configuring the actions so under the simple version we see we can allow users to add items or edit items so what that means is a user who has access to the calendar component can actually tap into it and create a new event just by clicking on a calendar and they can type in their event title and go from there uh, we can also allow users to edit items so if they tap on an event here um, it'll actually open up the edit screen where then they can configure the event from there um, what i would like to see at some point is for us to have the ability to have a condition as to whether or not they can add or edit items for example only admins can add items and then maybe only the event owner can edit the item uh, glad doesn't have that quite yet but Hopefully I'll, we'll see that in, in the near future. Uh, you see where you can also enable advanced actions. What that means is that instead of just being able to um, allow the changing and so forth, we can also add other actions like adding a primary action on the bar here. So we could have, have like a new event button up here maybe. And what does the item click do? For now it says show edit screen, but maybe we wanted to do something else like show the detail screen of the event. Right. So this is under the advanced actions, or you can switch back to default actions, which will just go back to um, what the simple version of this calendar component should be. This calendar is also responsive. So if I were to go in and add a container um, and make this container maybe one to one, I can have my calendar on the left hand side and I can have my uh, list on the right hand side. And we see that we can actually have a side by side view of different items so we can have you know the calendar on the left and the log on the right kind of thing so very very neat uh, love that we actually have this calendar component now to, for us to play with would love to see how you're using it so as you are developing and playing around with this calendar component go ahead and leave me a comment below as to how you're currently using it we can have a conversation from there if you have any questions at all feel free to reach out to me in the forums or leave a comment below or you can reach out to me at twitter at rpetito and as always thanks for watching